Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious. We've got a wonderful program about the birth of the space shuttle program happening 50 years ago today when President Richard Nixon directed Congress to approve $5.5 billion and give NASA the money to build a space transportation system. And Congress approved that in April with Apollo 16 on the moon. And of course, we'll be talking about that in April when John Young heard the news. He said, uh, what did he say, Marty? He said, uh, golly gee, our country needs that shuttle. So and then he ended up being the astronaut to ride the first one. Got Marty Winkle behind the controls. So grateful for y'all watching us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our audio partners on Google, Spotify, and Apple. So please tell your friends to follow, like, share, and subscribe to any of those services so you can stay curious with us here at the American Space Museum. I have in front of me here a couple of models that we have on display that we'll talk about in a moment. I asked my our collections manager, Nick Enix, if I could borrow these to show you on Stay Curious. Of course, we're your proud Brevard County nonprofit, Brevard County being the delivery room of America's space program. And we have been humbly for the last 21 years preserving the birth of the space age and artifacts like these so that people can enjoy and understand the tremendous legacy of America's space program, that one of the proudest things of our whole country. As I tilt these up a little bit, just want to give you the concept that uh, these are some early concepts. We're going to see a lot of concept photos here in a minute. And this is a, a, a two spaceship system where they were going to have one ferry up the orbiter and then the, the ferry ship comes back down to land and be reused many times. And uh, so wanted to put this aside here a second. Um, because they are quite valuable in there and uh, uh, sit down here. So I want to show you this. Well, sit down here a second. Okay. And kick our show off with a friend of ours at the U S space and rocket center in Huntsville, Alabama sent us this picture today and I'm hitting the eye, Marty. I got you. There we go sent us this picture today of the snowfall in Huntsville, Alabama. There you go, snow on a rocket top. Not a rocky top, but a rocket top. And that is, of course, in Huntsville, Alabama this morning. Thank you, Delania Yancey. She is an educator. I th think that's her role. I know she's involved with Space Camp there at Huntsville, and they have been having lots of kids coming back and adults to Space Camp. Uh, I've been there several times, a beautiful facility. It needs to be on your bucket list. And uh, talking to Delania, we're going to build a bridge uh, uh, with her. Uh, there she is. Hi, Delania. Thank you for that wonderful picture. And she's going to share some of her national treasures, resources there at Huntsville with us, hopefully in the future, as well as some photos of some of the displays there. So that's what we do here at the American Space Museum build bridges to uh, share our space industry with our partners out there so you learn and understand more about how integral this is in our lives today. Um, but let me go back to the, there, what a picture. They don't get snow very often in Huntsville. Looks like a pretty heavy snow there on those pine trees. And uh, that is uh, in the Rocket Garden there at Huntsville, Alabama, and hope many of you have visited and will be there to visit. Well, our story today, uh, there I'm going backwards, uh, I got to say behind me, I have a beautiful mural by the great Robert McCall, one of the premier space artists of our time. He has passed away. I think he would have been 100 years old a couple years ago. Uh, you've seen his artwork on uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and a lot of the most popular NASA publications have his artwork on it. This one you don't see too much. Uh, uh, the, uh, a concept, again, of a two spaceships, one that would ferry the orbiter up to space with the VAB in the background, and that's my model there. Look how that fits right in the VAB, Marty. It's coming right out of there, our uh, early... Uh, North American concept of that. So we're sharing with you the great work of Robert McCall, and uh, we hopefully will do a program on him one day. So let me get past our 
Thank you, Delaney, again. Of course, you'd rather look at her than Richard Nixon and James Fletcher sitting there. James Fletcher, the NASA administrator uh, who is integral in bringing the uh, birth of the space shuttle to fruition. Here, Nixon and he in 1972 uh, are looking at a model of that. Um, and, oh, sorry, got, uh, I, there is Nixon with uh, the governor of uh, um, Florida. His name's Keel, I believe. Is that right? Remember Governor Keel, K E E L, or Kel, there, uh, with another shuttle concept. That's Marine One in the background there with the presidential emblem on it. Does that look like Rocco Patron to you between Nixon and the other fella? Uh, that's Rocco, isn't it? Uh, and he was he was over the whole Kennedy Space Center, of course, during the Apollo era. Uh, and there again is Fletcher with uh, with Nixon talking about this. Uh, President Nixon, uh, uh, he decreed, or not, he did decree, he's not king, but he, dis, he directed NASA to manage a $5.5 billion space shuttle program on this date in history, January 5th, 1972, 50 years ago, saying that it would be the workhorse of future U.S. space efforts and replace all present launch vehicles. In fact, the concept was so arrogant that they said, forget your single stick rockets, Titan and, and Atlas and, and Delta. Well, no one's ever going to want to use them again because we're going to become, with our 60 foot by 15 foot payload bay, everyone will want to use our space truck. And of course, we know that that, that that changed after the Challenger disaster and the 25th shuttle launch. They want to do uh, two a week, uh, everybody. Uh, they, they were thinking they could do 30 to 40 launches a, a month of the shuttle. That's how, how it was billed to Congress. Um, I got another picture here for all of you Trekkie Techie fans out there. Uh, that is the great James Fletcher on the left, a wonderful NASA administrator that I wanted to share his history with on the left with uh, – uh, bones there, and the, the Enterprise is in the background, uh, and that is um, uh, the in the center is Gene Roddenberry, who created um, the Enterprise. Uh, Captain Kirk didn't show up for this for some reason, and we'll ask, but I put that in for you, Jessica, our Trekkie Techie that has taken our Stay Curious program to new heights there, and also to share with you a little bit as we're talking about how important the shuttle was, you all know that Fletcher was the fourth and the seventh NASA administrator. All right. That's a good trivia question for you space nuts out there. Uh, he, of course, was involved with the early shuttle planning. And then Reagan brought him back for the recovery uh, efforts after the shuttle disaster. Uh, uh, and, of course, these are political appointments uh, 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 on uh, Democrat and Republican side of the fences there. Interestingly, Fletcher was the former president of the University of Utah from 64 to 1971. And uh, he died at age 72 in 1991, Marty. Didn't live very long. Uh, and uh, But uh, thought we'd share that with you a little bit about space history and our shuttle. That, of course, is the Enterprise model that was used for the approach and landing tests out at the desert of, of Edwards. Uh, and then it is now... Um, it was used as a fit check at Kennedy and then Vandenberg. And I believe it's on an aircraft carrier in uh, New York Harbor, right, Marty? Uh, I think is where the Enterprise is. I'm sure one of our Stay Curious followers will confirm or correct me on that. And we're glad that you do. You know, uh, uh, I work without a script and, and just a few notes and, and uh, cram it all in my head. And I got Marty there to correct my ums and ahs and uh, tell me I'm saying shuttle instead of space station. So thank you all for, for, for uh, participating in our program, and please do chime in. There's Fletcher again with Nixon, and look at some of these concepts we're going to look at. The early shuttle program, uh, when they, of course, people had concepts of a reusable spacecraft even in the 50s and 60s. Uh, was the dream that we would be launching spacecraft like we're launching the 747s and now all these big jumbo jets. Uh, this is an early concept, looking out the VAB of a rollout to the launch pad. I do not know the artist of that. Shame on me. 
Uh, here's another concept. Again, two space planes. The bottom one was going to take it to orbit or almost. And then uh, the other one would go to orbit with payloads. They're almost like identical twins there. And this is a cool one I like, Marty. Is look at that behemoth there. It's like the, the big super guppy going to the edge of space, taking the space plane up. And that's the concept of Virgin Galactic because they have got a mothership that is a tandem motor uh, en uh, engine uh, plane that below it is the space plane of Virgin Galactic that drops off with a rocket like the X-15 to go to the edge of space suborbital. Here's another three concepts there of showing you the idea that they wanted a space plane taxi system that would go to space. Uh, Marty, look on the side there. Have you got your arrow or the circle handy? You see I'm going to point you to the side pods on that shuttle that were uh, engines, probably solid rocket. Go there, Yeah, look at all the engines on the ascent uh, rocket. And then go up to the orbiter, Marty. And you see on the side by the payload bay are uh, rocket uh, rockets there that were for landing. That was for get it to orbit and then go behind you there on this, each side of the payload bay. Yeah, there you go. Those are the rockets that were, were designed for landing. So it wasn't a glider when it landed. It had some jet engines on it there. In the upper left, you see that's a NASA red-lettered concept photo, the real deal that NASA... Uh, artists were thinking about. And that's why we put STEAM in, in our science, technology, engineering, arts, and math education. Here's a beautiful example of artwork done in the 70s by NASA artists. And of course, the only time we've seen the shuttle on top of a flying plane is when they the uh, approach and landing tests uh, with an Enterprise there on top of a jumbo jet that did not go to the edge of space. It only went about 30,000 feet up. And then deployed the shuttle to act because it was a glider. And uh, here's a concept that few of you have seen. Basically, someone put today's shuttle on top of a Saturn V rocket. This was a concept that Grumman had, and I apologize I didn't grab a Grumman model. Grumman had a space plane pretty well designed to fit on a Saturn V rocket, and uh, it lost the bid to Rockwell that was based in California. Again, politics, because President Nixon was the governor of California and lobbying for this as president. And so, bingo, it ends up there. Grumman doesn't get the concept of like this. Uh, the concept was not with an E.T. on there. This is somebody's Photoshop mashup. Here is sort of the Grumman uh, concept on a... Uh, a single uh, stick rocket, if you will, to orbit it to space. And this was a real thought about it. And the whole idea was you don't want the humans below anything because you got chances of things falling off like it did with the shuttle external tank and damaging the tiles, the reentry tiles. There's another cool concept there. Again, I got my space plane there in, the, in a little bit in the way. You see the people there, cargo, a lot of concepts of taking multiple dozens of people at a time to space instead of the most we've taken is seven. I think twice we took eight people to space. I know once for sure. This is like a tugboat, Marty, going to space. This is one that would be bent on top of another spacecraft. And here is the, the, the ascent stage uh, after it lands at Kennedy and, and getting serviced and all. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve motors on that baby. Imagine that. And it would take a, it would take an SSME type motor, wouldn't you think, Marty, to bring that down and uh, aerodynamically? So here, when Nixon was was pondering this and had the team of of scientists working on this, these are some of the concepts they came up with that the shuttle would be used for crew transport, delivery of of satellite satellite repair, uh, a tug that they could put up. Uh, and, and, and put things up in a higher orbit like they wanted to with the Hubble telescope uh, and uh, planetary probes, of course. When we took, we did uh, five or six planetary probes out of the shuttle cargo bay uh, right there in the middle years uh, after Challenger when they were practicing how to use it as a space lab. And what is this oddball thing? Marty, have you ever seen this? Yeah. 
They this is Rockwell's concept called the bread box. This is a model. Uh, that somebody made of it called the Constitution, but it was a for real concept, one of the weirdest uh, uh, space reusable space uh, planes that I've ever seen. But it was, it was Rockwell's bread box. So Nixon decided with his team that we were going to use it for military and civilian purposes. There's a concept with four engines on the back, not three. A little bit of t a little bit of difference in the the way the profile looks and some trim tabs on the wings. And there's Nixon pondering at Johnson Space Center with one of the officials there what they finally came up with and saying, this is what it's going to look like, Mr. President. And, uh, and so be it. What was born on this day 50 years ago at the direction of President Nixon and $5.5 billion he requested from Congress, which he gave him in April of 1972, was the original November 72, you see at the top, okay, uh, 125 feet, uh, it's actually 122 feet, and the wingspan is 78 feet, not 84, all right, the orbital bay did stay the same, 15 feet by 60 feet, that was directed by the military, because if the shuttle is going to launch all your single stick rockets or uh, everything and the single stick rockets are going to be obsolete, of course, the military is going to put a lot of spy satellites and heavy uh, air force. You know, air, yeah, Marty corrects me. Specifically, the Air Force was our National Reconnaissance Office. And they specified that's the first ones that they went to and said, how big of cargo bay do you need for your spy satellites? And 60 by 15 fit the KH-12, known as Big Bird, a very important spy satellite in American uh, security. Uh, and, you know, Marty, I've always seen this little little uh, pole at the front of the external tank, as well as the ET sometime, that, that never uh, was put in use. Uh, the mission profile, for those of you that really don't know it, was we were going to launch... Of course, with the first 20 miles is where you need the extra boost from your first stage rockets. And the side, the side rockets were nothing, nothing more than pop bottle rockets uh, of solid rocket. You could not turn them off. All right. And the spaceship goes up over the Atlantic Ocean. And at two minutes, those rocket boosters drop off. It's about 20 miles high. And then the engines of the shuttle with its gas tank is the big external tank to fuel those engines, takes it up to space. They jettison the gas tank over the India, India Ocean, and they're in orbit by the time they get over Australia. And then, of course, the reentry was going to be, they really wanted a jet type of reentry so they could, if it was, they could do another pass if they had to. But that was too much weight, too complicated. So they one and done glider landing of the shuttle. And as you see at the bottom, this is the concept from March 7th, 1972, that was presented in every magazine and newspaper of America at the time, announcing America's great reusable spaceship, the Space Transportation System. And here is the space transportation system, uh, another early concept model with a little breakaway. Uh, you can see the crew compartment in there. Uh, uh, they peel back the skin in this illustration of it to show you it does have ribs like a, a an airplane and then very complicated, the engine compartment in the aft part of the space shuttle. But this was another photo circulated 50 years ago on this date in history telling people, we have the plan to go to space and one day we're going to take you all with us. Well, 50 years later, we've got some entrepreneurs or private businesses want to take you all with us. Uh, uh, who wants to go? Who's got the money to go? A concept that many of you might not have thought of but was on the drawing board. And Marty, I don't know why we've never used this. Uh, if you know a reason, blurt it out. But it was Space Shuttle C, C for cargo, where the instead of a crude reusable space plane, they were taking up a disposable, all right, basically a, a, a disposable pod full of uh, uh, science and so forth. There is an engine on the back to boost it up to the orbit, but it doesn't even have wings on it to bring it back home. So 
the shuttle C concept was something you're involved with at all, Marty. Well, well, I think it was a dollar for a budget. Uh, back then. Yeah, budget thing. Yeah, of course, of course, is a budget thing back then. So uh, let me let me have a little rocket fuel here talking about all these rockets with the uh, beautiful Robert McCall uh, painting behind me there, and another kind of retro. Let me increase the size of that, Marty, there to show, again, an official NASA photograph, all right, showing a space plane in NSA, at NASA up there at the upper left-hand corner, 71 means 1971, most likely. And look what's going on there, Marty, right there in the middle. Circle that, if you would, sir. We've got a rescue mission going on from the International Space Station on the right in the... Uh, uh, you see there's a, a, a an astronaut strapped in a gurney and, and some sort of line between the two there. There we go. Yeah, look at that. There's an astronaut on a gurney. One, uh, Two of them are at the hatch of, uh, of a reusable spaceship, and another one's over there at the, at the space station. So, you know, 50 years ago, NASA was thinking of every conceivable concept and, and possible way to use this reusable space plane. Uh, for the good of mankind, and also as uh, to rescue maybe not even uh, Americans uh, from a space station, uh, having that capability. Of course, we've never went that far, and most of it is because of money. All right, and uh, uh, it is expensive. And you know, uh, Nixon started the space uh, the space shuttle program fifty years ago today, but he also. Uh, nailed the final uh, nails in the coffin of the Apollo program because he allowed the Apollo and Skylab programs to compete after canceling the last three Apollo landings, 18, 19, and 20, that were already paid for, hardware built, astronauts being trained. They are now in our museums. Uh, and, and but So NASA, while he denied the enormous funds that NASA needed, to continue going to the moon post-Apollo and build a base Antarctica style. He did set budget limitations on, on, uh, uh, then on, on the shuttle, which resulted it as being partially reusable, eliminating the space plane that Robert McCall has here that ferried up the orbiter. Uh, so, uh, but you know, uh, politics is politics, but the time of history, baby boomers like myself and Marty know was a turbulent time in the 60s and 70s. And the, the, the Vietnam War was costing as much money as the shuttle, pro, as the Apollo program, which was basically $40 billion in 1972 money, which translates to about $400 billion. A half a trillion is probably in today's money what it cost. And um, the... Um, the Vietnam War, had that not been going on, they would have had the money to continue 18, 19, and 20. And then you got the Civil Rights Movement that needed money all of its own to rebuild the intercities and so forth. So uh, there is a lot always going on in our world and politics that affects the American space program and space programs all over the world. Uh, so uh, be grateful, I guess, for what we have done with the resources that, been have, that have been allotted. And uh, I don't get involved in politics. And, of course, we don't at our nonprofit here at the American Space Museum. Uh, we, are, we just want our country to do its best at being a leadership in the space industry and doing the great things that we've done, like we've done the last 50 years with the shuttle. The 30-year shuttle program had its moments of, of tragedy, but far overshadowed the triumphs of the shuttle. And we will be telling you more and more about those every Stay Curious program. Myself and Marty Winkle and our Trekkie Techie, uh, Jessica Galloway. So, Marty, we got anything to, to say or share with our great listeners out there on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch? And hope I've been descriptive enough for you all on audio podcasts on Google, Spotify, and Apple. We certainly want to hear from you. Anything, Marty? Several comments and just too many comments. Okay. <laughs> too many comments. We like that from you all out there. And we'll go back and answer each and every one of them. All right. So tomorrow we'll be back with you. Thank you, Marty. 
We've had some great visitors in our museum. We've got some excitement that a PBS series, a, a PBS station out of Miami, is doing a program on the people of the shuttle. And they were in our museum today checking out B-roll backgrounds and, and getting some background history of the shuttle. So we're, we are very excited about our, our national treasures, our shuttle relics, getting their due on a PBS program. And we will be following that every step of the way. A bunch of great people that I met today. Uh, and uh, you better believe, talking to me, they become instantly passionate about our American space program, particularly the shuttle. So, Marty, thank you. Thank you, everybody here at the American Space Museum. It's a, a, a total effort here by our staff, led by Karen Conklin, our wonderful director. So we'll be back tomorrow with another program for you. Until then, I'm Mark Marquette saying we will bridge the space between us tomorrow to help you stay curious.